I believe Peyton Thorne will be Auburn's starter this season. And when you look at PFF, the numbers support it. Freezing temperatures are likely for several hours inland and a few hours closer to the coast. Yes. You are Locked On Auburn, your daily podcast on the Auburn Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on into Locked On Auburn, your daily Auburn Tigers podcast. I'm your host, Zach Blackerby, and thank you so much for making Locked On Auburn your first listen every single day. Joining me today, special guest, Max Chadwick, college football analyst over at Pro Football Focus. Max, Auburn fans got some exciting news. Actually gotten several waves of exciting news, but of course the biggest being Peyton Thorne. Uh, Auburn's newest quarterback in Max. I believe he will be the starter. I know there's a lot of Auburn fans that love Robbie Ashford, but I think what Peyton Thorne brings to a Hugh Freeze offense supports the fact that he will be the starter. And Pro Football Focus likes Thorne more than Ashford as of this yeah. point. Yeah, 1,000%, Zach, and thank you so much for having me on here. Of course. uh, Yeah, I would would say Peyton Thorne should be the betting favorite right now to be the starter. Now, of course, this will be a battle that we see throughout the summer, but I think week one, Peyton Thorne is the guy that Hugh Freeze is going to roll with, and I know you said a lot of Auburn fans love Robbie Ashford. I also love a lot of the flashes that Robbie Ashford has. You know, the ceiling that Robbie Ashford has is definitely higher than the ceiling that Peyton Thorne has. However, and the reason why Auburn wasn't able to make a bowl game last year, there is a low floor there with Robbie Ashford. Now, of course, players in college always improve, and Robbie Ashford could very much take the jump and become an elite college correct with those tools. But if he doesn't, I think Peyton Thorne gives the high floor for Auburn. And, you know, he's he's a quarterback of a winning team, of course, with Kenneth Walker at Michigan State when they won double-digit games. Uh, He had a solid year last year, worse year for sure, but it's still a solid year for Michigan State this past season. I think he's the safe option for Auburn. And for a team that's trying to get back to a bowl game, I think that's the option that Hugh Freeze is going to roll with, at least to start the season. And the pieces around them have gotten better, right? I mean, the offensive line continues to be good. It seems like every few days Hugh Freeze is adding another offensive lineman. In the last three cycles, Max, prior to Hugh Freeze getting here, Auburn added eight offensive linemen. Since Hugh Freeze has been here, nine. And, And so just kind of an emphasis on protecting the quarterback, right? I mean, you need a good offensive line to do that. And you saw you saw an effective running game, and a stat came out where when a running back has 150 yards next to Peyton Thorne, he's significantly better. Because, of course, what quarterback is it when you have a running game? They didn't have a running game last year. Like you said, they had it two years ago with Kenneth Walker. You guys really like Jarquez Hunter in your rankings. And so... Yep. I mean, how do you expect the running game to play into what Peyton Thorne can bring to an offense? I think the bread and butter of this Auburn uh, offense could be the run game. And I know it sounds a little bit weird saying that when Tank Bigsby was just drafted by the Jacksonville Jaguars, but yeah. you mentioned before, Jarquez Hunter, I think, is a star. And I think he's a guy that has really been overshadowed, obviously, with Tank Bigsby there. And I'm really excited to see what he can do next year. A lot like Robbie Ashford in some ways, not in terms of the, the low floor, but the ceiling that you see with this guy is absurd. You know, he made some Georgia defenders look stupid on some place. So Jarquez Hunter is a guy that I think could easily become one of the superstar running backs in college football and a guy that, you know, might be a sleeper right now for a lot of people, but I think he's a super talented running back. And I think he's definitely going to help out Peyton Thorne in that run game. I'm with you. And then you mix that in with the scheme that Hugh Freeze brings and just kind of the success that he's had with quarterbacks. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun to see whoever wins this quarterback battle is going to be in a good situation. So tell me, when you guys look, you know, when Pro Football Focus comes out with all of these numbers and these advanced metrics, and I mean, you guys do a fantastic job, a fantastic job. When you look at Peyton Thorne's numbers, what stands out to you specifically about his play? So the, the first thing I would point out when, when comparing him to Robbie Ashford is that, you know, they're similar in terms of like the, the good throws and that you'll see from them. But the difference between the two and ultimately why I think Peyton Thorne is ultimately going to win the job is that he just doesn't commit as many turnover worthy plays that Robbie Ashford does. And the reason why he had over 20 points better passing grade than Robbie Ashford. Ashford had a 50.1 passing grade this past season. Peyton Thorne 70.7. And Peyton Thorne regressed this past year too. So you, you could see him even improve to what he was showing in 2021. But you look at the turnover where he plays, uh, Robbie Ashford, 4.4% of his dropbacks ended up in a turnover where play, which is a pretty high percentage. Peyton Thorne only 3%. 
uh, at that rate. So I think he's a guy that, you know, is just not going to commit as many turnover worthy plays as Robbie Ashford is, is not going to put the ball in harm's way as much. And, you know, he might not have the, the pure arm talent that Robbie Ashford does, but I still think Peyton Thorne has really, really good touch on his throws. And, you know, Robbie Ashford has sub 50% uh, percent completion percentage and Peyton Thorne, I think is, is more accurate than that for sure. So that's why I think he's, he's definitely got the higher floor than Robbie Ashford and, and really good touch on his throws too, from what I've saw from him. Yeah. I mean, even in an off year and a crummy offense, 60% completion percentage and, and Auburn fans are like dying for that with, with the defense <laughs> that, that I think Auburn's could have this season um, paired with the running game that we've already touched on. You kind of want a guy that you just can trust that's not going to turn the ball over and that's going to, you know, complete 60% of his passes. If you do that, and if you told me like you can take that right now, I think Auburn has a chance to win eight games all of a sudden, because mm -hmm. I, I think, I think the fact that you're raising the floor a little bit gives you a chance to win an extra game and a half to two games potentially this season. Exactly. And, you know, if you, if you told me Peyton Thorne is going to have to carry the load of this offense, which he was kind of asked to do last year at Michigan State, I would say, you know, I don't know if Auburn's going to maybe make that bowl game. Maybe they'll be right around the 5-6 win mark next year. But the yeah. fact that you mentioned before, like they improved the offensive line. Gunnar Britton, the Western Kentucky transfer, I'm a huge fan of. Love that uh, I think he's a really, really good tackle for, for you guys now. Um, so the offensive line's improving. Obviously, like I said, Dark West Hunter should be the lead guy in that offense. And like we mentioned before, Peyton Thorne was a very successful quarterback when he had, you know, when he wasn't the guy on the offense, when Kenneth Walker III was the guy. And I'm not saying that Charles Westwinner will be as good as KW3, but I am saying that Peyton Thorne, the fact that he doesn't need to be the guy, that makes me more confident in this Auburn team going forward. Whereas if you said, hey, the quarterback needs to be the guy, then maybe I would say, okay, let's roll the dice on Robbie Ashford because I do think the ceiling is much higher but it is a roll of the dice with Robbie Ashford for sure if you're rolling him as a starter. But the fact that you're not relying on Payne Thorne to be the guy, that's when you want the high floor quarterback. And like you mentioned, the defense has a lot of pieces, even though they've lost some guys to the draft, like Derek Hall. I still am a huge fan of DJ James, the corner for you guys. I think he's a stud. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that with the defense and the run game, you just want safe at quarterback. And Robbie Ashford, as from what we've seen, isn't a safe quarterback. Peyton Thorne is more of a, a safe quarterback that I think Hugh Freeze will opt for at least early in the season. Yeah, Auburn has a few PFF darlings and I, that I want to ask you about and, and a few that transferred in. But yeah, you mentioned Gunnar Britton, like mm -hmm. left tackle of Western Kentucky, right tackle now for Auburn. Then the guy that's playing left tackle now, Dylan Wade. I think he scores pretty highly based on what he did at, uh, at Tulsa. I always mm -hmm. accidentally say Tulane and people give me heck for it. So <laughs> I, I want to make sure I said that right. He played at Tulsa last year. But but seriously, both of those guys should allow whoever is a quarterback to excel a little bit more. But Max, I want to ask you, I want to ask you, it's a small sample size. It's growing more and more every year as we have this new era of college football. But can you use the grades that you guys have at pre-FF to kind of project what they can do when their total setting has changed? I mean, you're talking about a guy going from Michigan State to the heart of SEC. I want to touch on that in just a moment right here on Locked on Auburn. Today's show brought to you by our friends at Built. If you were looking for a delicious snack, but you don't want all the sugar and calories, and you have to try the best-tasting protein bar ever, that is Built Bar. You got to try this. They're healthy and taste amazing. All of their bars covered 100% in delicious. Decadent chocolate, high in protein, low in calories, only 130 calories per bar, just 4 grams of sugar, with a whopping 17 grams of protein for most of their bars. You can have, head over to Built.com. Use promo code LOCKED15, L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-1-5 for 15% off your order. Or head over to your local Sam's Club, Walmart, or grocery store. Shout out to Built Bar for partnering with the Locked On Podcast Network. So, Max, you look at it, and Peyton Thorne in the 70s in his two years as a starter for mm -hmm. Michigan State, you take that information – a system that wasn't super great, especially last year. You put it in a new system with Hugh Freeze that we think is going to be very quarterback friendly on the planes this year. What type of success have we seen with quarterbacks that maybe scored that with you guys and then moved to a different setting? I mean, we saw Bo Nix do it, right? We saw right. Bo Nix go to Oregon and be great. Are there other tendencies that kind of point to this being a possibility, that big jump coming? Yeah, I, I think a jump is could be expected, especially since he graded better, at least in 2021, with a 77.6 grade, which is, is pretty good, honestly. Sure. 
uh, and 71.8 this past season, like we mentioned before. Uh, but yeah, it always is different when you're transitioning from a different uh, conference. Now, I will say he is going from the Big Ten to the SEC, which is still a jump. I'm not denying that. But it is, you know, around the same competition level. Then you talk about guys like, like you mentioned before, Dylan Wade and Gunnar Britton. They're going from a group of five conference to the best conference in America. That's yeah. when you, and especially offensive line too. You know, they're not facing the dudes on defense that they are uh, in the SEC. So that's when you're maybe expecting them to take a little bit of a step back. Uh, but Gunnar Britton's another guy that I'm still really high on for for next year. But yeah, I think Peyton Thorne, you could expect a jump for sure, especially like we mentioned before. I think the situation at Auburn next year is going to be more favorable to him than the situation at Michigan State this past season. And, you know, when he had a favorable situation, like we keep mentioning, he was really good. Uh, it, was, it was very solid, I should say, at quarterback. And he was still solid this past year, too, even in unfavorable unfavorable situation so yeah i could i would expect to jump especially you know as a college kid going into another year as a starter yeah mm -hmm. i would expect peyton thorne to, to take a jump not only in his play but his grade as well max when you look at peyton thorne and you put him hypothetically against other team or other quarterbacks in the sec where do you think peyton thorne will rank at the end of the season among SEC quarterbacks, assuming he's a starter. I just asked you an impossible question. <laughs> You're never going to come back on the show again because I'm asking you these questions. But yeah, I mean, if you had to guess, just shooting from the hip, where mm -hmm. would you say? So that'd be interesting. I, I definitely, there are some SEC quarterbacks I'm, I'm a huge fan of uh, next season. And guys like Jaden Daniels, obviously the LSU quarterback coming back. Sure. I think Peyton Thorne, you can make the argument, will be a top half of the SEC quarterback next year and i do think that you know there are a lot of quarterbacks in sec that are gone obviously talking about anthony richardson bryce young will levis stetson bennett so there is an opportunity there for peyton thorne to emerge in that sec mm -hmm. but i would still say there are some guys really good quarterbacks coming back like i said jane daniels kj jefferson the arkansas quarterbacks coming back i have would you say hope. kj jefferson's a really good quarterback I would say so. I, I actually am a fan okay. of KJ Jefferson. I think I like his rushing ability. I think that's ultimately what what pushes him up for me. Sure. Um, yeah, I think as a pastor, there's still some some warts there to to, to clean up. But I, I like KJ Jefferson enough, and I like uh, I like a lot. Um, who was I just? Kidding? I like Joe Milton a lot, the Tennessee quarterback. I think mm -hmm. he's got a big arm. He's obviously had some issues from his time at Michigan, and also when he was the Tennessee starter before uh, Hendon Hooker took over. But I think arm talent wise. If that offense does to him what it did to Hendon and Hooker, I think he could be a superstar. In yeah, that that's offense. a great great system for him to play in, too. Oh, 1,000%. All yeah. the vertical throws that they have in that offense. Spencer mm -hmm. Rattler is who who knows what is up with that guy. He didn't have a great year this past season. Um, but I know South Carolina fans are all over him. So, yeah, I think expecting Peyton Thorne to be in that top half of the SEC, especially with so many guys being gone, Hendon Hooker, of course, gone to and Cecil Bennett. Uh, sure. Yeah, that's. I think a top half of the SEC quarterback is, I think, fair to expect from Peyton. Yeah, and I think Auburn people would take that at this point. Right. If you were given, you know, a top half of uh, the SEC, because I think that means other things went right. I think it means your offensive line took a step forward. I think your running game at least stayed where it was at, if not improved, to kind of help set things up. And I think a receiver or two has to step up in order right. for Peyton Thorne to be a top half quarterback in the SEC. Can, can guys other than Camden Brown step up? And w it sounds like Auburn's close with some other transfer receivers. Can that, mm -hmm. Does it all click on offense? That, that's certainly something to, to look at. All right, so there's some PFF darlings still on this roster that we haven't talked about. You guys really like Jarquez Hunter. Mm -hmm. I thought y'all liked Damari Austin more, but I just looked it up while you were talking, and he's like a mid-60s player. I thought he was higher than that. But DJ James is a guy right. that I think he's the second highest graded SEC corner that's returning. I think only Kool-Aid McKinstry is higher. Um, yep. I love DJ James. I mean, I, I think he is. In, I think he's the best corner in the SEC, and, and I think he has to do a little bit more than some of these other top corners in the SEC because I think Auburn's pass rush isn't quite as good as you know what Kool-Aid McKinstry has in front of him at Bama or is what he's had in front of him at Bama. But yeah, what do you see when you look at the grades that DJ James gets? Yeah, one thousand percent. I mean, he is one of the highest graded cornerbacks, like you mentioned, returning. And you know, this past season, he earned an eighty, almost an eighty-six coverage grade, which is very, very good. Uh, obviously, a little bit of an older corner, a little bit skinnier too. He's got good height and good length at six foot one, but one seventy-four. He's a little bit skinnier. But I am a huge fan, like you mentioned, of DJ James. Uh, he's a really good off uh, coverage corner. Doesn't really mm -hmm. do a lot of press coverage. Where I think is smart with uh, his frame, 
But I wish he, he did allowed, more, Max. I wish he did I, more. I, I, I so do I. When I was watching his tape actually a few days ago, uh, I really wish he did more too. But yeah, he yeah. allowed about a forty percent completion percentage, which is excellent this past season. Had nine forced and completions as well. So yeah, he's a guy that I love the mentality that DJ James has too. When I, when I was watching all of his targets this past season, uh, yeah, he is definitely. I don't know if I, I don't know if I'm willing to to say he's he's better than Kool Aid McKinstry, who I think is the best corner not only in the SEC but in the country. But I think DJ James is certainly a top probably 15 or 20 corner in the country. And I think he has a chance to really emerge next year as one of the premier corners in the SEC. He's really good. Another guy that you guys really, really like is uh, Brian Batty, the the USF transfer. And, and I think that's something that surprised me a little bit. But uh, what do you see when you look at Brian Batty's uh, grade so far? I mean, very good in special teams. And then we'll see what kind of role he plays in the offense as well. Yeah, of course. And I, I think Brian Batty is another guy who we were talking about before, you know, making the transition from yeah. going from the American Athletic Conference to the SEC is going to be a jump. Do not expect him to, to be the guy in that Auburn offense as good as Jarquez Hunter is. So, yeah, I think Brian Batty, though, is a really good uh, number two back, and he graded out pretty well, like you mentioned before. Not a great receiver, but he's a really, really good runner. Um, yeah, I don't know if I expect him to be too much more than a, a nice complimentary back to uh dark west hunter he's a very small back like very very small he's 5'8 165 um so he's kind of more of like a scat back in that in that aspect but yeah brian batty i think is a guy that auburn fans can expect some electricity when he's on the field uh you know taking some carries from from dark west hunter where he goes to the sideline to get a little gatorade uh break but yeah i think yeah. brian batty's really good and i think he's a guy that uh, can break some tackles as well. And yeah, he's smaller, but he's still an electric back too. So I'm, I'm a fan of Brian Batty for sure. So what did he do to, to test and grade so well within, you know, however you guys do all of this? Cause his offensive grade was an 87 and a half and his run grade was a 91.6. I mean, that's pretty, that's yeah. pretty solid. I mean, that's not much different than what tank graded out at. No, not at all. And again, I think, uh, the most important thing I think to whenever I uh, do any of these podcasts, I try to say is like the grades are not the end all be all as sure. Uh, as I'm sure a lot of people like to make them out to be uh, like there are some guys who grade out really well that I'm like, I don't think he's better than this guy or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I yeah. think Brian Batty for sure is a guy that really I mentioned before breaks tackles at a really good rate, which is uh, is really Good to see for a guy who's only 165 pounds. You expect to go easy, go down easy on contact. He broke a tackle on like more than 30% of his carries this past year, which is a very, very good rate. And also, like as a smaller back, he's still you would expect to be a faster back, and he is exactly that. You know, he had 20 carries this past season of at least 15 yards. So he's a guy that I would expect, you know, to make some big plays for that Auburn backfield whenever he does get the ball. Uh, I don't think he's he'll ever be a full time starter for for the Tigers, but I do think yeah. he'll be a really good explosive complimentary back for Auburn. Max Chadwick, thank you so much for your time. How can people check out everything you've got going on, man? Of course, yeah. So I, all my articles are at pff.com. You could check out my uh, my Twitter or TikTok at Chad or score Maxwick. And I also I, I have a uh, new show now called Preferred Walk On, where I'm interviewing a ton of big time players. Caleb Williams, I've interviewed. Uh, mm -hmm. Jordan Travis, Olu Fashano, Joe Alt, a ton of other guys too, Braylon Allen. Um, so yeah, we're doing a lot of interviews in that channel, so go check it out, uh, Preferred Walk-On. Coming up, our friend Jay Stevens, host of Locked On Buckeyes, joins us to tell us about Auburn's newest receiver. Stay tuned. This is Locked On Auburn. And joining us now here on Locked On Auburn for the first time, Locked On crossover, Locked On Buckeyes host, Jay Stevens hanging out with us. Yeah, we were joking. Auburn and Ohio State don't cross paths too often, but great to have you on the show, buddy. So tell us about new Auburn wide receiver, former Buckeye, Caleb Burton. Really good high school receiver. A guy that when he got to Ohio State, there was some thought that down the road, he would be a receiver that Ohio State could ride or lean on during crucial moments. But as you know, Zach, Ohio State recruits elite receivers every single year. And when you have a couple guys in, I believe Noah Rogers and Carnell Tate, who catch touchdown passes during the spring game, it's going to kind of set you back if you're an older guy who yeah. didn't get playing time a year ago, probably won't get playing time now. There's Brandon Ennis, another freshman, who's probably going to be talked about or thought about as a guy who might be in a backup role on the 2 deep. It's kind of one of those things where it's like, if I'm Caleb Burton, should I stay at Ohio State or should I go? 
He decided to leave. I think he's going to be a really good player for Auburn. And honestly, if you get him for two, three, four years, whatever it is, you mm-hmm. might be looking back and saying, man, getting him when we did at that point in his career was a great move for the Auburn Tigers. Yeah, it's a weird situation because he was so highly touted coming out of high school, you know, a Texas native that always kind of gives you a little bit of a, a plus, an edge. And then the fact that you're a receiver and Ohio State wanted you, Jay, I mean, that's kind of that's kind of the Auburn perspective on this. Well, it's like, well, if Ohio State wanted him to play receiver, possibly down the line, like, great, sure, sign me up. But yeah, it, it's tough to evaluate because he didn't play last year. Red shirt season, but... So I guess my question to you is when would he have played? Would he have ever played? Or would this been a thing where, you know, by the time he's a junior, Ohio State and his coaching staff, they're fired up on these other four and five stars that are coming in and, you know, maybe the ship has sailed. I mean, do you think he ever would have played at Ohio State? Probably. Let's see. This would have been a true sophomore year if he would have stayed at Ohio State. Assuming last year was viewed as a red shirt. He had red shirt shirt last year. Uh, yeah. Rest of freshman, correct. Rest of mm-hmm. freshman. So probably two years. I mean, okay. realistically, but that, that's the thing. Realistically, you're looking at two more years before you get on the field. And I'm not just saying like start, Zach. I mean, literally just get on the field as a receiver. Yeah. You kind of got to utilize the portal and use it to your favor. Because if you don't, you could be a guy that's looking at um, not playing college football, not because you were injured two or three times during your career, because you stayed at a school and you were never going to play it. I do believe when it comes to the future, just had the NFL draft, uh, what was it, a couple weeks ago? Yeah. If you're a guy that thinks, hey, I am I can be good enough at some point to be in the NFL, to get drafted, maybe staying at Ohio State, staying at the school you committed to originally is not the best move for you. Mm-hmm. Maybe the best move is going somewhere else. Now, Zach, I will say Auburn better get a good quarterback. Peyton Thorne's good. I like Peyton Thorne. Don't get me wrong. Sure. But you got to got to get some guys down the road that can help a guy like Caleb Burton be all that can be on the football field. Because if you do that, not only will Caleb Burton get drafted, but also that quarterback will as well. Yeah, and hopefully that's the case. And that's what Hugh Freeze is, is working on. Walker White, of course, appears to be the quarterback of the future for the Tigers. We'll see if uh, he and Burton connect down the road. That's, that, that's a fun thing to think about, Jay. So what do you expect Burton's game to be? I know it's kind of limited. We're basing this off of what he did in high school and then kind of practice reports, right, from you know what he did at Ohio State. He's built like a wide receiver, a slot guy. Is that kind of what his role was as far as you can tell at Ohio State? Yeah, I think that slot role is where he's best suited, um, especially when you're weighing in, what is he, 5'11", 169 at Ohio mm-hmm. State. It's a very, 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 very slender frame. So even yeah. if he's going to be playing slot, you, you want him to beef up a little bit, gain at least, at minimum, 10 pounds sure. to kind of be able to withstand the hits from the linebackers and over the catches he makes over the middle. Because if not, he could get broken in half because those hits are going to be pretty brutal. But no, I think he's probably going to be a slot guy. One thing I love when I watch him play is, that's, is how good he is at high-pointing the ball catching the ball in traffic, and using two hands to bring the ball down. And I do believe that at 169, if he wasn't able to do that, he probably wouldn't have gone to Ohio State, just being honest with you. Because sure. you, you, if you're smaller like that, you have to have some really good exceptional traits. That's one of the ones that he has um, in his back there. But, no, he's just a slot guy. I mean, if he gains enough weight, he could be outside. Um, yeah. I don't think it's going to happen. Probably a slot guy going forward, or probably a really good one in a couple years. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I guess my next question is, do you think he can play right away in the SEC? I mean, you know, the level of the Big Ten and level of the SEC, I think it's closer than than some SEC people would would like to admit, Jay. But, I mean, is this a guy where, you know, maybe if he wasn't at Ohio State, maybe if he was at an Iowa or if he was at a Nebraska or now, of course, you know, Auburn, a team that, is used to being in the top half of the SEC, and Hugh Freeze is certainly trying to get him back to that positioning. Is he ready to play right away, or do you think he still needs some seasoning in this league? I would say seasoning. Um, Zach, Big Ten people, Ohio State people will not like what I'm about to say. The SEC is head and shoulders above every conference in the country. And so I was trying to be respectful, a- Jay. I was trying to be <laughs> respectful. That's all it is. No, we should, let's be honest now, Zach. No, the SEC is different. No, I do think it'll be. Some seasoning because, granted, you're going, you're practicing 
but you're doing a lot of scout team reps. You're not even practicing like the true playbook. You learn something quickly, helping the offense, or excuse me, helping the defense get ready for the next week. Mm-hmm. You kind of got to fine tune yourself. Now, granted, in those moments, you're still fine tuning your craft, your route running, your blocking, all those things. But maybe he doesn't understand the playbook. Maybe he didn't get, get enough time to understand the playbook and wrap his head, head around it because he wasn't doing it on the field. Maybe he could talk it out, but in, but in um, actual practice, maybe it was different. See, these are things that I don't know. Yeah. He, he didn't play. And so if you play, you it's get hard. more of those practice reports and things like that. Um, but pro- more seasoning, I really do think that. But honestly, one year down at Auburn, I think he could be a really good player for the Tigers next year. I just don't think right away it's the right decision to make to make him uh, a big piece of the offense in year one down in Auburn. Yeah, you, you love his traits, and, and I'm with you. I think he'll turn into a pretty solid wide receiver in this league, but uh, the how quickly he can get there is the biggest question. And so it seems like there's a little bit of urgency with Hugh Freeze and the guys that he's bringing in because, I mean, receiver is certainly a position of need for the Tigers. I mean, it seems like there's one, two, maybe three guys that I think they feel comfortable with, and I think there's a big drop-off. And so he's going to have opportunity, Jay. I think he's going to have opportunity to play early in his time on the Plains. You mentioned his name earlier. You're a Big Ten guy. Just your general thoughts when Ohio State played Peyton Thorne. (laughs) Um, (laughs) I think it was a beatdown every time they played. So it's not really the best way to analyze a quarterback. I think he's good. I think he's a good quarterback. Um, I just think that Nell Tucker might be trying to go a different direction out there in East Lansing. I think he's a good quarterback, a solid guy. He just he's a power five starter. So like I keep saying, like yeah. solid, good, like really average type of words. I think he is a power five starter. I just think that there's something maybe special being uh, created down in Auburn. He said, "Hey, how about I go from Michigan State down to the SEC?" And also, I'll go back to it again. Mentioned the SEC and how good the football is. I mentioned the NFL draft. If he wants to get drafted higher, if he does good things down in down in the SEC, that does a lot for NFL teams and NFL scouts. So I don't know if, the, if this was a move for the future, being mm-hmm. high, making more money in the draft. But if it is, Zach, it makes sense to me. Yeah, yeah. Hugh Freeze has got a pretty good track record with quarterbacks too. So we'll see if uh, we'll see if Peyton Thorne is the next. Uh, player to benefit from all of that. Jay, thank you so much for your time. My friend, if people want some Ohio State action, how can they get it? Check out Locked on Buckeyes on Apple, Spotify, Odyssey, or the YouTube, wherever you get your fine podcast, including the SiriusXM app. You can get Locked on Buckeyes there. Locked on Buckeyes is free and available across all platforms every Monday through Friday, a part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. That's right. You can follow all of my stuff on socials at Z Blackerby, all my written work at auburndaily.com, and we will see you tomorrow. This has been Locked on Auburn.